Welcome to the second episode of Series 1, everybody. We are glad you made it through our first episode. Well, hopefully. And uh, decided to try out another one. A quick note, same as last time. This episode has been remastered to meet our improved quality standards of 2022, as opposed to 2018 when it was recorded. Um, But maybe not as good as it probably will be if you are listening to our current episodes that are in 2024 or 2028 or whatever. (laughs) Um, I'm not sure how time works. So uh, hopefully they're better, but not worse. Yes. Despite the improved audio, we were still pretty fresh at this. We hope you'll stick with us. We promise that we get more charismatic. Mm-hmm. We really, we really do. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, at, at the very least, the guests still shine, and the content is fantastic. Uh, I I learned a lot going back and remastering this um, that I had forgotten since it's been four and a half years since I last listened to the series. Yeah. So, really, with all of that out of the way, please enjoy the show, everybody. time on Character Creation Cast. Neil was creating a dwarf cleric. Tall Squall was creating a dwarf fighter. Amelia was creating a half-elf bard. And I was creating a human monk. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. So I think I have all my stats set. I am just really bad at figuring out where to type everything in here. Okay. All right. Are you guys all set on your stat placements then? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, any Anything you want to point out about why you put certain numbers where you put them? It might be uh, interesting for our, our listeners to to understand kind of the thought process of why some numbers should be higher than others for your class. I, uh, Because I'm being a fighter, uh, certainly want to either have strength or dexterity as my main stat, being a dwarf. Um, I do get a bonus to strength, so that sort of helped steer me towards what types of weapons that my fighter will use, uh, which would be weapons that are based off of a strength check as opposed to a dexterity check. Uh, what that means is that for things like axes, hammers, swords, you know, it's how strong you are, it's how hard you can swing the sword. But there is also something in the game called a finesse weapon, which would be like rapiers or uh, things that take finesse, daggers, rapiers, that you can use your dexterity instead because it's your skill and precision that determines the damage that they do. Um, So there's a lot of people, there are both uh, brute warriors, uh, fighters in this world, but there also are uh, more trained uh, finesse uh, style warriors. fighters in this world and so uh but because of being a dwarf and kind of fit into the mythos of dwarfs um i uh went ahead and put mine in strength um as i was telling i kind of want to tell the story of this coming of age of my character um i had one of my scores was a 10 i was like okay so where do i want to put that um and since i'm going to play a young character makes sense that helps me tell my story so i put the 10 in wisdom he's a kid you know he's he's not too world uh worldly he's probably grown up in his with his, inside his dwarven clan maybe not traveled a lot um doesn't know a whole lot of the world and so i went ahead and put my lowest score in wisdom to sort of help reflect and tell that story nice how about you neil i and it uh, and you kind of alluded to it, Ryan. I mean, you always want to be mindful when you're doing your scores to definitely think about like the implications of what kind of character that is when they interact, but also what bonuses you're going to get because you've chosen a specific race and that you know, every even number, you get an additional plus to anything you would do with that stat. So for my wisdom, I went with 15 because as a hill dwarf, 
I got an additional point of wisdom. So then it bumps it up to 16. And I went the opposite route. I, I have very low intelligence and I have a low dexterity because I feel like I'm going to be the opposite with my character in that they're an older dwarf that just didn't go adventuring, but for whatever reason, eventually, like later in life, felt the call to become a cleric. And now they're going out and they're adventuring for the first time. Nice. Yeah, and uh, for myself, I I went ahead and put my highest stat, 15, into dexterity, uh, knowing that I could give it an extra plus one because of being a human, so now it's 16. Um, and as a monk, most of your attacks uh, and everything is based around the dexterity stat. Um, and I believe wisdom is the, the secondary stat that monks uh, enjoy in this system. Uh, they get a lot of uh, like key moves that are uh, key as K-I uh, moves that allow them to, to do things like cast spells or do special abilities later on, uh, which is really interesting. Um, but I wanted to utilize my really horrible rolled stats, my seven and two eights. So I actually put seven in for strength because I'm kind of picturing this monk as kind of a feeble person who walks with a cane and looks totally unimposing. But when combat starts, moves with a, a an agility and deftness that you really don't expect. Um, so I kind of put these, the strength, intelligence, and charisma as my lowest scores to, to kind of uh, offset that. Um, so he's kind of pretty decent in combat, but you wouldn't really expect it looking at him or interacting with him. I chose to put my extra stuff into charisma because um, that's, I'm, I like playing face characters charismatic characters it's just kind of what i prefer to do and usually what i'm what i enjoy doing most um and part of why i chose a bard because they tend to be sort of the face of the group and most of their abilities kind of key off of that charisma stat um playing musical instruments um any of the spells that they cast that kind of thing very cool and we just got a few other things uh, to tie up. It looks like uh, skill choices. Each of the classes that we have chosen have a different list of skills to choose that that we will be proficient in. Um, and then uh, just some equipment choices. And then we can get on to the meat of our characters, the, the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I have to keep remembering that my variant human gets an extra skill proficiencies. This is the exciting portion of the episode that we will be editing out. Right. Mm -hmm. Where we pick all of our stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I'm going to brag on D&D Beyond where it has everything there. You click the toggles and it automatically dumps it all into your character, uh, which makes it, gosh, so nice. Because even, <laughs> even me, because I used to use a forged anvil sheet, which does a lot of stuff for you, but there's still a whole lot of work you got to do on their sheet. Whereas this is just a... And, you know, uh, you're done and done. Yeah, that's extremely helpful. And I believe you said um, when we were talking earlier that it has a an automatic generator, like randomly creates a oh, character yeah. for you. Um, yeah, actually, it was great. Uh, could not have done a better, you know, uh, uh, now I'm going to brag on Critical Role. Could not have done a better intro last night. They were, you know, it's become the official tool set of Critical Role. But uh, Sam always does these sort of crazy intros uh, each week. And some of them are very silly. And it's kind of like, gosh, is that really helping with, you know, them get their message across? And I'm not sure whether Sam was asked to do this or whether he came up with it. Because it sure looked like he came up with it on the spot. Uh he would said, "I've got a, I've got a contest for uh, for all the other players. Whoever makes a character first, you know, wins the prize." And so you had the other uh, plus Matt. So you had the other seven players there uh, show how quickly you could literally, with two or three clicks, create a character, a randomized character <laughs> in D and D D Beyond. And I'm telling you, you know, for anyone who was watching and was not. Uh, aware of it. I mean, actually, let's, I mean, here, let me do this right here. Uh, so randomize, choose level, 
three, choose race. I'm going to say all sources. Uh, actually, this is the chooser. So maybe it's, a, it's it must be a different one. It must be the quick build. Choose race. That's no, still choose race. I thought there was a random, a, just random that it would automatically kick one out. Race, choose class. I'm going to have to look to see. I thought I had it right here. Because <laughs> level three, choose race. So here again, I can choose a race, choose class, paladin, uh, create character. Yeah, so you put in race and class and uh, view character sheet. Let's see what it came up for me. So uh, Kumdar Dalin is a hill dwarf paladin, level three. Uh, 13 strength, 15 dexterity, 14 constitution, 9 intelligence, 13 wisdom, 10 that he is good at athletics and religion. Uh, you know, has taken inflict wounds as a, as a spell. Wow. Um, he's an anthropologist. Uh, he is, uh, gives me his height. Uh, let's see. Does, he didn't do ideals, bonds, and traits. So that's not in there. But I mean, everything else is already filled in. Wow. Uh, oh, he's a, he was a tiefling because he has a, a hellish rebuke. Must was he tiefling? No, a dwarf. He took hellish rebuke. Uh, so he must have. Let's see, because a tiefling. Uh, now I'm getting into this. So way. What's his? Uh, what's his? Uh, subclass for? Uh, for his paladin to have hellish rebuke. Her. Huh. Now I want to. Now I'm all interested. Would that be a in vengeance stuff. paladin, maybe or. Yeah. Uh, oathbreaker. He's oh. an oathbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds take, awesome. Take that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a really interesting tool. If if you just wanted to, to really test your role-playing skills, roll up a random character for your campaign and and roll with it, you know? Yeah. I, I kind of like that they, they leave the, the traits and, and flaws and everything um, available for you to, to fill in yourself because that yeah. gives you a little bit of control over it. But, yeah, that's that's really nice to get all the mechanical stuff out of the way yeah no for sure um all right have we all made all of our choices here yeah for those I of us think that... that i'm all set i get plus one to my constitution hit points and we are we are making level one characters this time around so no need to worry about leveling them up at this point actually for for my equipment um i had a choice between a short sword and any simple m weapon um and it's it's kind of interesting that you either can take whatever they suggest the short sword and just roll with that but when i think of monks i don't really think of monks wielding short swords i mean there's a lot of uh wuxia uh films out there that you've got the the short sword monks flying around and doing all sorts of cool things so i guess i can see that but uh, with my character as feeble as he is, I'm going to go ahead and choose a quarter staff, so he can use that nice. as a walking stick. So, um, just to update you, you actually can do a pure random character. Um, what you do is you just don't pick. Uh, you don't when you are doing the random character. You can either set in a race and class, or you literally can just say create character, and bam. You have to, the only thing you have to put in is level. Wow. Everything else, it because I just, I just had it came out. I tried it. And I uh, have a Yon T pure blood wild magic sorcerer. <laughs> that would go very well in a all good aligned player group. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but then if you hit the random character button, then you don't need to listen to our entire podcast about how to make a D and D <laughs> character, and so you know put us out of business. Yeah, so so never do that. Listen to our podcast and do what we say. Listen to it through every time you need to make a character. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> How is it randomizing this? Never mind. We can move on. I have a <laughs> I have a halfling warlock with a three strength and a seventeen dexterity. So when it says random, get ready. It means random. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's truly random. Uh, you are really rolling the dice on that one. Ooh. Yeah, because my sorcerer has a 14 charisma, but an 11 intelligence. Mm. <laughs> wait, can you... So, wait, did you say three strengths? I did, and a five How on constitution. How do you even hold your, hold your own head up at that point? Get, like, Yeah, I've, th this Yon T is an eight strength, nine dexterity, five constitution. Wow. Well, that, that makes me feel a lot better about my seven strength, so thank you for that. There you go. 
oh, wow, it's random spells, too, because it's the craziest <laughs> set of spells you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, Tosqual has created 17 characters this episode. <laughs> I did, I'm truly, I'm like sitting here, ding, 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 ding. Uh, too much fun. That's awesome. All right. How about we get down to the uh, actual character then, the character details and background. Um, I know we get a, a few basic choices, uh, name, gender, uh, height, and weight. And I know that some people like to select that from the, the racial descriptions. It gives you a range between uh, certain heights and certain weights. Um, or there's actually random tables that you can roll on that will give you a base height that you roll an extra die and add it to that. And then it gives you a base weight and you roll a multiplier die that multiplies what you rolled for your height and adds it to that base weight. It's a little complicated at first, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. I will choose to just make stuff up. As well. Do what I want. <laughs> you do you. I am going to actually roll because I've always enjoyed rolling on that uh, that random height and weight table. I have to look at page 121 in the player's handbook. And don't get me wrong, I'm all about random tables. I love random tables, but I don't want to do math, so. So I am five foot eight. That's not a bad size. I rolled a 10 for my height modifier, so now I roll 2d4 in order to determine my weight modifier. Three and three is six. So I'll multiply 10 by six, that's 60. Add it to the base weight of 110, that is 170 pounds, if my very basic math is correct. So that's about on point. There you go. And this is, this is the point where you get to kind of choose your character's age, your um, color of your skin, hair and eyes, and, and any other different characteristics that you want, if you want your character to have scars or a tattoo or, or things like that. So, Neil, what are you, you going to pick here? For, How oh, tall are you going to be? I just wrote in hilarious things. Um, All right. I wrote hair, most of it, skin, still there, eyes, too, height, <laughs> not tall. Um, and then, I, then I'll be old, so then I wrote 150 um, for my dwarf. But, um, yes, all of those other things will, co I like it. will come out in play, I assume. Yeah, and dwarves can live for quite a long time, so that makes a lot of sense. And you, Tosqual, did you fill yeah, in your stuff? Yeah, and did the rolling as well. So my dwarf is uh, four feet, uh, six inches tall, and uh, let me do the 256, so that's a 10. Uh, 2D6, uh, so 130 times that six plus an extra 60 pounds and 190 pounds. Yeah, dwarves are, are very uh, hardy stout. folk. Very oh. stout. Yeah. Stout. Dense. Dense. That too. In a very <laughs> physics Not very buoyant. <laughs> and like I said, so mine is actually going to be on the younger side. Uh, and uh, so uh, basically a, uh, a dwarf just coming of age, which I claim, let me... When I look at my dwarves, uh, I claim that it's about the same aging as humans. So I'm going to say he's like 19. Um, let me double check that because I don't think they age. It. I know that they live longer, but I think they come of age about the same speed. Mm -hmm. Considered young until they reach the age of 50. So in that case, he's actually – no, so he's more like – I'm going to say he's like 40. So he's actually you know, really – sort of behind the you know, uh, young for uh, for dwarves out in the world. That's awesome. I went ahead and went with a uh, relatively young age for a human, uh, 23. Figured he, uh, he had a lot of extra training at the monastery because he has been so feeble. So it set him back a few years. I just went with 27 because it felt right. I was like, that's a good number. Um, half elves come of age around the same time as humans. They just tend to live a little bit longer than regular humans. Mm -hmm. Not as long as elves, though. Then I totally changed mine after hearing the numbers, and I am now 304. All right. 
Awesome. <laughs> starting hey, this group of youngsters. Starting my life as a cleric. Yeah, that is quite a quite an old dwarf there. You're never too old to really do what you love, though. Yeah. You know, to learn new things <laughs> and just get out there in the world. Yeah. Life never lessons. Never too old to become what you might have been. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So now that we got those basic details out of the way, um, let's go to the, one of the more quote unquote controversial details, the alignment. Um, I know some people are not much fans of the alignment system in D&D. I happen to like it. Um, but you have to keep in mind when you're choosing your alignment, it's not set in stone. It can easily be something that you start the game feeling like your character is going towards these sorts of ideals. But as any good story can tell you, characters grow and change. And so can your alignment throughout the game. Um, the alignment has some mechanical benefits. There's some spells and magic items that only affect s people of certain alignments, either good or evil or whatnot. Um, I know that was ex especially prevalent in previous versions, and I'm not too familiar with it in 5th edition. There's only a little bit. There's nowhere near what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, I do know, like, there's some, like, animals and stuff like that that are still have specific alignments for, like, um, so many. druids mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and the alignment system in Dungeons & Dragons, it's it's nine different alignments that you can choose from based upon uh, two different factors. One factor is your basic moral values, uh, whether you're good, evil, or uh, kind of in the middle as neutral. And the other one uh, describes your attitudes towards society and order. So you're either going to be lawful, chaotic, or again, right in the middle as neutral. Uh, you stick those two together and you get things like lawful good, chaotic neutral, neutral evil, things like that. And that effectively... Uh, neutral neutral. Neutral neutral. Uh, usually referred to as either neutral or true neutral. I know everyone corrects me, but I just like to say neutral neutral. <laughs> To be a neutral square. I have a very random question. Tall Squall, do you guys have alignments? Did you choose your alignments for turn cloaks? Because for for just to preface the question is um having an alignment and then being put into a terrible situation, you will choose to do things, and I say this as characters and just us as people, you will choose to do things that you will that may surprise yourself once you're in those terrible situations. So I turn to turn cloaks that is chock full of terrible situations. Um, yes, yes. Uh, Alistair does have an alignment. Um, I'm not going to share what that, it is. That's totally fine. I didn't, but I, yeah. it was to the point where I wouldn't. Uh, I yeah, mean, no, I, we, uh, we did, you know, will hates alignment. Okay. But for me as a, as me, as a role player, it's something that I like to have sort of, so I know where, they're coming from mm -hmm. you know it's interesting uh you know alistair is another very young character and young and stunted in his you know in his uh sort of emotional development from the situation <laughs> that he was put in so um yeah no alistair's another one of these uh stories you know trying to match up the character creation for the story I wanted to tell got very interesting. Awesome. Yeah, because I could have also completely seen you guys not choosing that and just letting it be what it was because of how awful yet amazing the scenarios you are in. <laughs> We're recording on Sunday. Oh. And I, I'm bracing myself already. It's so weird because I've got – you know, I had this tonight. I've got the vice at two tomorrow. I've got learn by play where, you know, it's the, the, <laughs> the craziness that that is. And then it's like, I've got to then mentally completely reset into, okay, turn cloaks. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> is that one? Is, I haven't listened to it. I know it's, it's darker. Is it like more, do you, are you guys focus more on dramatic stuff then? Uh, like yeah. More? I mean, it's, um, First thing, it's low magic. So, you know, it's interesting as you were talking about, you know, why D&D? &D? Um, 
you know, one of the things that we you have sort of the standard settings, but I also think it can be it's very flexible for um, molding into other situations. Turn cloaks is a very uh, low magic world. Um, so think sort of the Dark Ages, you know, uh, Dark Ages England type idea when you had things like the Black Plague. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. in this case, you have the Blood Plague, which uh, has some magical componentry to it. Uh, we have a few people who are able to wield magic, many of our party included, but there sort of comes a price with it, which we're <laughs> even now still discovering. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, no, I mean, it's uh as i was saying with it being a dark world i mean it's things that you would have encountered uh in those days you know there is uh this sort of nobility and then a sort of squashed peasantry underneath of them that is mainly held in place through uh violence and tradition and um very little regard for um for human life and so it's it's and all this while you've got this plague that's happening that people are you know uh using in different ways for their own benefit i mean it's it's just it's a very um dark uh dark place where it's hard to be the hero um and so we're in that place right now uh what does that even mean what is saving this world even look like uh, I'm going to have to pull that up and listen to it because it sounds similar to I, I just joined the Shadow of the Cabal actual play podcast, which is Legend of the Five Rings. Mm -hmm. um, but that's like feudal Japan. Um, and so I know I wasn't in there last season, but um, it deals with the same, a lot of the same sort of like class issues and, you know, sort of that dark like disregard for people. But it's also heavily dramatic too and i i like playing those kinds of games i feel like i mean there there aren't as many of them out there especially in like actual plays and stuff too yeah i mean we're an actual play podcast but again we um it's a lot more player interaction with each other where every once in a while dices are dice are thrown for outcomes and certainly when there's combat we use the combat mechanics but a lot of the interpersonal piece is us uh playing off of each other so it's a very in a way it's a very loose take on the system because we aren't rolling for every action but you kind of have to have that's where you get into having to having the right group to be able to do that with mm -hmm. and collaboratively storytell without stepping on other people's actions or narrative or where they're trying to go with their story so it gets you know it, it's it's much more of a uh it, it's less of a game and more of a story yeah, you're much more focused on the narrative and like the role play part of it, like the 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 role more than the play, mm -hmm. so to speak, is you know right. um, much more focused on you know that acting and that part of it rather than the the dice. Interesting. I'm going to pull that one up and find it, and we can you know obviously edit all of this <laughs> yeah. fun chit chat out. But it is it is a very wonderful podcast. I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's on my on my list but i feel mm -hmm. like that's the eternal podcaster thing of like oh yeah it's on my stuff on my stuff to listen to yeah like, <laughs> i got i found the, them through wander quest and wander quest just destroyed me emotionally in the best way possible and i'm like i need more of this hey this uh this sydney character is on this uh other podcast called turn Clicks. <laughs> I, I might as well check that out and oh my Am goodness I cry? Oh, you're probably yeah most likely mm. i <laughs> But in, in like, I know that's been been uh, the running I was joke say, with we cry. Oh yeah, the that's... players. We, I mean, I, I mean, episode twenty one. I was a mess, yeah. an absolute mess after you know it's my scenes. Good. Yeah, no, and I mean, I cried during my when my origin story because oh. Will twisted it around. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, and then oh, and then, I thought I had it bad until I heard oh god, uh, Joseph and Sydney's yeah, <laughs> Tam and Ari's yep. origin story yep. is just horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like oh my, you know, and then we all you know it was oh man oh man yeah 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 I'm I'm really excited to like get into those kinds of games because like 
I, I like that kind of like really heavy emotional stuff and i don't feel like you get to, you have to have the right group of people to play those kinds of games too and i'm i'm excited that i'm gonna get to play one of those but i know having listened to this first season of shadow of the cabal too um, tanner the gm has told me several times that his life goal is to just see how often he can make me cry um and you know in in what places he can do it so i've cried at work i've cried while making pancakes for my children it's everywhere all the time so we'll just see if we if i cry once we start actually playing too i'm sure we'll to edit some of the tears out like all the sniffling <laughs> all right we have made our our height and weight choices and um we've moved on to alignment do you guys have specific alignments you want for your characters or are you um for myself sure uh, again going with the uh some of the mike merle stuff uh you know, one of these things was saying, you know, most dwarves, unless they're sort of extenuating circumstances, are lawful. Um, I think because my uh, character is young, I'm going to say he's lawful neutral because he doesn't. I think he's still very much in the I'm listening to, you know, my clan and what they told me I should be, but not quite sure whether, you know, he, he he's young. He's going to go out and do stupid stuff. <laughs> Kids these days. He's going to make bad choices. Those darn youths. <laughs> Those youths. Forty-year-old youths. Youth. <laughs> youths. <laughs> what about you, Neil? Um, so I did allow for the age to be that extenuating circumstance, and just you know, having been in the the dwarf system, as it were, for so long, I went ahead and went with chaotic good. Um, just because I've seen enough to say, I get that the rules are there, but sometimes stuff has to happen outside of them. And but then also wanted to be a good character. All right, Ryan. Um, I went with my staple neutral good, uh, because I believe pretty much do good no matter the cost. And that's kind of uh, how I'm picturing this monk who wants to kind of change the world, but he is not really uh, picky about uh, the ways he goes about it as long as he changes it for the better. All right. I picked chaotic neutral. Um, uh oh. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> um, I, I just like the idea of being kind of like, you know what? Whatever. I do what I want, how I feel. Um, I mean, it goes back to my punk rock anarchy roots, but it just feels like the right personal choice. There you go. And as a bard, you have no qualms then with uh, charming people of their money. Exactly. All right. So now that we got those basic details out of the way, uh, we can go on to the personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, um, and the general background information on our characters. So uh, basically, the those four things that I just mentioned, um, you can make those up if you want, if you have a specific sort of personality trait in mind or an ideal or a, uh, something that kind of bonds you to your uh, your your class or, or your race or whatever. Um, and any sort of flaw you can think of, you can put in there. But uh, it's it's probably a lot easier to go and select a background that's provided in the, the hand guide and go off of that to determine your uh your four background features i guess you could call them so there's what is there like 12 or so backgrounds or something like that in the player's hand guide i know there's a lot of them yep and uh and then of course there's a whole bunch more that came out i think in sword coast adventures is that right <sighs> Um, I know one of them added a whole ton more. Yeah. Uh, one of the early books. I'll have to pick that one up because I've always wanted more background choices to go from. And I'm like, I got Xanathar's, I got the, the Dungeon Master's guide, I got Volos, but where's all my where's all my new backgrounds? I love backgrounds. Uh most of them, yeah, are in um Sword Coast. Hmm. Hmm. I love picking the backgrounds. It's like my favorite part. Yeah. I don't care about all the stats. I like all the. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about that. Those aren't important. <laughs> don't need those to play the game. So I went with Folk Hero because I liked it. I think it works well. 
I also did come up with a random name because built into D&D Beyond is the fantasy name generator. So you just hit randomize and it gave me Tazgrax and I added the last name of Hammerfall. Um, nice. So then the proficiencies I took uh, just to like better explain my background was smith and leatherworking. So that essentially I have all the skills to make hammers and swords, you know, like very ornate, you know, like leather handles and grips on them and i think like that's what it, like endeared me to the dwarven people over years and years and years of just making things so that's why i'm a folk hero amongst the dwarven people cool. and then my calling came and i at the ripe old age of 304 have become a cleric <laughs> So I'm trying to find one that's matching kind of where I want this guy to go, which is, uh, you know, again, this sort of young fighter who's just learning his craft. And I'm kind of wanting something that's got the feel of like a squire, you know, like to, uh, you know, that he's sort of a, uh, you know, a, a warrior in training, but went off uh, to go adventure, uh, you know, on his own. So I'm trying to kind of find what that is, what's going to make that uh, work. One of the nice things that I'm, is that there are rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide uh, for to make a custom background. Um, and uh, if things don't quite fit and that it's sort of automatic, that sort of auto balances them. Um, again, in D&D Beyond, there's a nice little selection on there where it, you know, it tells you what you can choose. Uh, you know, most of your backgrounds give you some extra skills or tools or languages or things. And, uh, you know, so you can sort of choose an option. If you can't find something that quite fits, you can sort of brew up a story for yourself. Um, I think that uh, I'm going to go with two skills, one tool and one language. Um, and then it, I don't want to take up a lot of time here, but then you can choose one of the other backgrounds for their feature as your feature that adds into it because night isn't quite fitting there for me because night feature is to have retainers mm. and where I think my characters mm -hmm. almost would be one of those Peter retainers. Retainer. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got to figure out what fits in. I'm sort of looking here. It might be uh, even like um, the urchin or <laughs> something that, uh, you know, I kind of think of the squire as the guy who, you know, has to run all these errands. So we might have lots of contacts or know kind of who you go to get the thing that the knight wants. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of going to work through that to figure it out um, and uh, sort of go from there. But don't feel as though if you don't find something that quite matches that you can't do some mix and matching, but there are rules that you need to follow so that it is a balanced background. It isn't just something that he's, you know, hey, my character's good at everything, you know, type idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you guys talk and I'm going to sort of figure out what it is that I want my back, what uh, the mix and match I'm going to do. Here All right. Is. All right. I want to take the charlatan background. Because I like the idea of being sort of snaky and, um, you know, a little bit underhanded. Not not super terrible, like not the worst, <laughs> but, um, you know, not not great. The kind of person that you kind of have to, like, check your pockets when you walk <laughs> away, like make sure that you still have everything there. <laughs> so the, the standard snake oil salesman that is uh, trying to peddle... Whatever they want. This will mm -hmm. change your life, I swear. What? All I have is less gold and no other change. See, you have less gold. It changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> and I can, um, as a bard, write my own jingles, which I feel like is, you know, really helpful. I don't have to have to uh, commission anybody to write my my jingles for my products. I like Good it. old fantasy jingles. I can start my own infomercials. <laughs> <laughs> Just ride through the town on your horse slowly spouting off your jingles and and leave the town and everybody will wonder what the heck's going on mm -hmm. so i sell my fantasy george foreman in the back of oh, the there cart you go. there you go also not a sponsor <laughs> <laughs> but you know we won't discriminate so were we also going to talk about the personality characteristics all mm -hmm. bundled in? Or yes, uh, or after, after we choose the backgrounds, uh, we'll go ahead okay. and go through the, the characteristics. Okay. 
All right. So from my background, I went ahead with uh, a traditional monk sort of background as an acolyte. Um, and that's somebody that devotes your life to a specific uh, temple or religion. Uh, so I actually went and looked through the the list of gods in the player's handbook um, and went to the Forgotten Realms gods. And I was like, well, what looks nice that matches my alignment neutral good? Um, and Lathander, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, kind of stood out to me as the uh, god of birth and renewal, um, domains of life and light. So I kind of pictured my character as somebody who who loves life and and helping make life flourish i guess you could say but he's not too bright so he kind of is a little slow on the uptake but his heart's in the right place <laughs> he means well mm -hmm. he does that's all that matters and how are you doing over there, Tall Squall? Yeah, so um, I've got this sort of custom squire uh, that I've put together. And what I've done is I've mixed uh, urchin and, believe it or not, clan crafter, but I can explain why that is working for me. Um, <laughs> because as I, with this whole idea of the dwarves, you know, his clan is sort of a warrior clan. So it's him becoming a uh you know, hone trying to hone his skills to become a better warrior and then i went with this urchin uh piece which is city secrets which kind of was fitting through my you know the patterns and flow to cities and can find passes through urban sprawl others would miss uh when you're not in combat you and companions can travel between two locations in the city twice as fast kind of think of that whole here's the kid who knows how to run errands you know he was you know on the on call to some senior member of this uh this warrior guild that he was in and then my personality traits i want to always want to know how things work and what makes people tick uh as one person i did but it's sort of more geared toward that hey how did you do that really cool move that you just did as a fighter and then uh for an ideal uh, aspiration i work hard to be the best that there is at my craft again being a fighter and so I've sort of twisted this clan crafter of making items into, you know, that you're built, trying to build yourself to be a better fighter. So this sort of really young, you know, sort of uh, stars in his eyes, squire wanting to, you know, train to be a uh, the best fighter that he can be, look, you know, kind of idolizing the uh, senior members of his um, group. So. And then with that, I had picking a skill, choosing two different skill proficiencies, a tool proficiency and a language is kind of what I went with there. Uh, and I'm still figuring all that stuff out. But like <laughs> I say, you know, a lot of these backgrounds, you can sort of mix and match pieces that you like of it in order to build this story like I have about this squire in a fighter's guild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the backgrounds in the player's handbook are all suggestions they're not set in stone it's it's just a place to get you started if you want to just take one of the backgrounds and use everything that's in there that's perfectly fine but yeah mixing and matching is uh where you can add a little bit more creativity to what you want your character to be but for myself i like i like doing things a little bit more random um mm -hmm. i'm gonna stick with my acolyte uh for everything and i'm gonna go ahead and roll up the different uh, uh, traits and bonds and whatnot. Uh, so for the different traits, there's eight different ones that they suggest. I'm gonna go ahead and roll a D8 and see what I come up with. Seven. I've enjoyed exquisite food, drink, and aristocracy among my faith's most elite. Rougher lifestyles chafe me. Hmm, <laughs> that's interesting. Are you gonna stick with that one? I think so. Uh, might as well. Um, I guess I'll be a little bit snooty in terms of uh, how I like to live, but you know, I'm I'm doing good, so I deserve it. <laughs> what about you, Neil? Are you gonna Are you gonna pick one? Or are you gonna roll on your table? Or? Um. So I did random for uh, a couple of them. Chose one, and I think one I will like kind of adjust to make more sense for me. So I kind of. Did all of them thrown yes. together? <laughs> the answer is yes. Yes. To that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I I like to do them randomly, and then um, if I don't like it, <laughs> roll yep. again or pick one. <laughs> I like to see what uh, what fate picks first, though. That is a perfectly valid way of doing it. Um, so for my personality trait, I rolled a two, and it says I have a joke for every occasion, especially occasions where humor is inappropriate. Perfect. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. <laughs> That's awesome. So for mine, I chose, I'm confident in my own abilities and do what I can to instill confidence in others. Nice. And I liked it and I kept it. How about our ideals? So I went with freedom. Chains are meant to be broken as are those who would forge them. And it is a K part goes back to my chaotic of chaotic good. I'm going to go ahead and roll mine up. All right, I went uh, and got a four, and that translates to power. I aspire to someday ascend to the elite of my faith's highest echelon. So you can eat great food. Yeah, no kidding. Well, you've been hobnobbing. I've been hobnobbing trying to work my way up, but, you know, I really want to get up there and and do some good from the top. And Tosqual, did you pick from... Yep, I did the. Uh, I work hard to be the best. I the best there is at my craft. You know, right. being being a being a, a warrior, a fighter. There you go. How about you, Amelia? So, I well, I rolled for my ideal, and I didn't like it. So I think that I am going to pick um, creativity. I never run the same con twice. Because hmm. that way they can't get you. Because the one I got was fairness, and that just is like. <laughs> <laughs> Fairness. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a good person. All right. I'm I'm just sticking with what I get. Um Bond. I'm gonna go with four, which which I just rolled. Um everything I do is for those less fortunate. It's kind of fitting for my character. Because everybody's less fortunate than you. Yep. <laughs> well, they will be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm neutral good now, but who knows? So let's see. I did. So this is one that I chose. The other two I had rolled, but this one I saw it and it, I, I think that's the other thing. Like I saw it and it stuck out so much that it may, didn't make any sense to actually roll. So I chose for my bond to be my tools are my, are symbols of my past and I carry them so that I will never forget my roots. And you're know, going back nice. to, the, you know, for 300 years, essentially, I spent time being this weaponsmith and crafter and like I can't it's so much a part of me that I can't forget it or let it go. You know, so I have essentially I almost I almost want to just wear like a smock like you know, like the leather apron that you would have at the forge. And then it just happens to have the symbol of Morden on it. And so like that's the only reason you might maybe be able to tell that I'm a cleric. That's awesome. What about you, Tosquad? What did you decide on? So for bonds, uh, I went with the uh, the workshop where I learned my trade. So the I'd say like the training ground where I learned my trade is the most important place in the world to me. So I you know sort of that whole again very idealized of you know being out there with the other fighters and learning with them and you know uh, he it, very sort of starry eyed. Um, I was gonna say our our three hundred year old cleric is gonna hopefully knock some sense into this kid. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take that hammer that he carries oh, over and knock upside the head you, with it. This kid learn. is just gonna be like. <laughs> you're gonna learn why my last name is Hammerfall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I rolled on my table for bond, um, and I got a one. Um, which is, I fleece the wrong person and must work to ensure that this individual never crosses paths with me or those I care about. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All right. And then flaws. This is my probably my least favorite and most favorite thing at the same time because they're all kind of awful, but that's the point. So I'm going to see what my flaw is. I rolled a six. This one's not too horrible, I guess. Once I choose an objective, I become so single-minded that the rest of my life fades into the background. That kind of that kind of sounds like uh, my life in real life. I get so hyper focused on something, nobody can really talk me out of 
what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It'll work what, out. What, what, what did you say? I've been talking mm -hmm. to you for 20 minutes. You've just been on the computer doing your podcast stuff. <laughs> just nodding. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> is this one you picked, Neil, or is this one that you So this is one rolled? that I rolled, but then I do want to change it. So what I rolled was I have a weakness for the vices of the city, especially hard drink, which for a dwarf mm, could be totally okay. But I think I actually want to go with a different route. And given that I am older, that I kind of approach my body very holistically but then like almost to like that umpteenth degree, like every time I get in town, I got to like restock on all the herbs and medicines that I need to like keep adventuring. Like it's a fear of mine that like if I don't follow this regimen, I'm going to fall behind. I mean, I've also got a 40 year old with me, so <laughs> got to keep up. Yep. It's good for my joints. It smells awful. Everyone will know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh for me i uh modified my the one the actual one in there a little bit but it's the same idea um which was i'm never satisfied with what i have i always want more i'm gonna say i'm never satisfied with my progress i always feel i need to improve what my skills so he's sort of this you know again over eager kid who's you know probably a little too hard on himself uh, but, you know, also knows that, you know, he's got fighters who are 250 years more experienced than he is, you know, that, uh, that he wants to emulate. I, um, I, I rolled a one again. Um, and so I got, I can't resist a pretty face. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. I actually really like all of them <laughs> for this one, but, um, I'm gonna stick with that. <laughs> I just realized I did not give my character a name. I haven't yet either because naming is the hardest part. Um, not when I'm you no randomize it. it, apparently. That's. Uh, yeah, I did the mm. one click. Yeah. Yep. You you and your fancy tools. I know. You know. <laughs> I did, and then now fantasy name generator. You don't have to. You can just go out to fantasynamegenerator.com and use it without doing it through D and D Beyond. And then that's true. Wake up! Wake up from your fugue state like three hours later. Like what? I've just been making names. Yeah, truly. <laughs> true. Yeah, fantasy name generator is like it. it you just you sit there and click it. It's just like it's like crack. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. You can fall down that hole for. Yeah. Never coming back out. <laughs> yeah, dude. I had to like literally <laughs> shut shut the window where I was being able to do the one click make a character because it was just like these. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. All right. I threw a bunch of uh, syllables together and came up with Jaren Feldspar. No, I'm not liking anything that it's coming up with here. <laughs> that is one of the problems with the random name generators. There's a lot that comes out that doesn't exactly sound the greatest if you're extremely picky. And I tend to be if I don't make the name myself. But we made it through our basic backgrounds. And I think the last portion of character creation um, is getting a nice little trinket. Um, there's a table in the player's hand guide that has 100 different trinkets on it. And it could be something kind of mysterious, like a map that you have no idea where it leads to, or it could be something like an old pair of socks. You know, there's there's quite a variety there, but it's supposed to add a little bit of flavor to your character, like why would you have this trinket and kind of wrapping that into your character background can be fun at times. Um, or you could just make it so it's actually just, no, I don't, there's no reason. It's just, I haven't bought in socks in, you know, 20 years. These still work fine. You go ahead and roll the D100 on this. Yep. So I rolled a 27. So I have a, which is a very nice Dwarven thing. I have a shard of obsidian that always feels warm to the touch. Nice. Ooh, that's cool. I rolled a 34. I got a rectangular metal device with two tiny metal cups on one end that throws sparks when wet. <laughs> what, what in the so you know world what it is, would that right? be? It's a nine volt battery. No. Oh, it is. 
What? <laughs> it took me a while to figure it out. I rolled that once. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, all right. So I, I don't think I have That's the right awesome. list in front of me. So I rolled a 70. What do I now have? Oh, I got the list right in front of yeah. me. Small you pack. got Okay, go for yeah. it. A small packet filled with pink dust. So. I, <laughs> drugs. It's. <laughs> oh, it's the it's the herbs. Oh, like it could it, be your herbs, I, but it's like crazy. Yes, yeah, but it's. I feel like it is like on that out outskirts of most people won't think it's okay that you do that, but like I'm convinced I need to do that. Yeah, no, right into the flaw. So it's not a fallen pixie companion that turned to dust. I just carry them around. <laughs> just carry them around. I have to find them. We were friends. I have to find then, their final uh, resting place. <laughs> Um, I got an 83, so if you want to look that up for me. Sure. That's a bit of folded cloth that, when unfolded, turns into a stylish cap. Very bardic. Nice. That is very fitting for a bard. And you know what? I'm going to write down 9-volt battery in my equipment because that's it's a lot shorter. to type. It is a lot shorter. But that's awesome. The, the power of sigil, it transported it to you. <laughs> that's amazing. That kind of kind of hints towards uh, kind of a cross dimensional aspect of Dungeons and Dragons, where you know the world that you play on doesn't have to be the only world in your your game. You could have crossovers into more modern times or things like that. It plays into that whole sandbox aspect of what D and D can be, and that intrigues me thoroughly. So. We've done it. We've we've created characters by the the rules of the player's handbook, and now we can actually um, piece all the pieces together and form a beautiful picture of where our characters came from and how did we all meet to become a first level party. So I have some ideas about Tall Squall and I, and this is just kind of something i was thinking is that you know i'm gonna let's say a you know tazgrax hammerfall is ready to set out on his adventure and essentially no one would kind of go with me but then and you know, i definitely twist this the way you would see your character doing it i want to say that like you're you were allowed to go earlier than would normally be allowed because you were the only one willing to I'm actually, I, I'm liking this, but I'm actually was going to twist it a little bit because I, I was trying to come up with a last name. Am I a Hammerfall and I'm like your like great, great, great nephew or something? And so, you know, and that I, you know, you either talked me into it or I talked you into it or we talked each other into it. You know, me wanting to, you know, me not thinking I should leave training, but you sort of going, hey, but adventure is the best, you know, the best trainer of all. You know, I, I kind of I like uh, the uh, uh, Avatar, the last airbender. I can totally see kind of almost like this. Uh, uh, what's his name? The great uh, is it Euro. Uh, no, the firebender uncle. Uh, oh, man, oh, man, this is terrible. But anyway, uh, I kind of see that idea of that. Maybe we're somehow related or something. I like it. I also love the idea that both of us aren't sure of the ideas. So we have hey, to Uncle go, Iroh. Yeah, just go back and forth with each other. Like, <laughs> well, you like this is the place I'm trying to convince you saying this is the place that you could learn things that no one else knows. Right. And like trying to like play into that. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I, I kind of like that idea. So I think that I'm actually a hammer fall as well. I nice. like that. I like the idea that like you are so over eager that you probably have like your dad is like, please take him off my hands. Take him with you. <laughs> <laughs> this kid is driving me nuts. <laughs> Easily could be. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What was your character's first name again, Tall Squall? Val Valgin. V-A-L-G-I-N. Nice. All right. So how does an adventuring duo of dwarves come upon a temple of Lathander. I mean, if we want to play into my um, flaw a little bit more, it could be that 
you know, much to the dismay and frustration of my great great nephew, is that I go ahead and like go to the temple every time we get into town because I need to like restock on like all the herbs and like remedies that I need. And so then like the only option was the temple of Lathander. Okay. I like that. And then I, th I see um, my character. Um, he's kind of, um, I guess, sheltered a little bit at the temple. Um, he wants to do good in the world. But they're like, yeah, but you're you're kind of weak and, you know, you, you're not too bright and not many people like you. Um, so, you know, maybe it's probably best for you to devote your life here. But I keep saying, you know, no, I I want to go. I want to do good. And I kind of see this uh, this dwarf come in all the time, getting restocked with supplies and one day I really want to uh, kind of see what he's all about and decide maybe my best way to do good in the world is to help uh, this Tarzak out in order to, uh, to get out of my confines within the temple. I accept. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking that this probably happened on your last restocking mission in order to uh, get ready to go on the actual adventure that you're going to be going on. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, we've had conversations, you know, over the months and then this time you're saying, oh yeah, we're going to be going on an adventure doing this fun stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, I might not see you for a long time. So, Hey, let me go with you. Get and, me out of here. And I want to say, I really like the idea that somehow we, or maybe not even me. So like at some point, Valjan has seen you in combat. I'm not sure why, but then like, so he really wants you to come along to like learn a different perspective. Again, you know, like that's the allure of adventuring is learning skills and techniques that none of the other dwarves back at home would be able to even begin to, un to understand. Yeah, no, absolutely. Seeing a monk uh, you know, even if you like, if I saw your, you know, wandered through the temple and found your like training ground, you know, saw your training yeah. ground and was like, whoa, like everybody doing their their weapon katas and stuff, yeah, in the, in the courtyard. And so then it became a, I think yeah, the two of both of us sort of trying to lure you out. Yeah, I I like that a lot. So I have a feeling that. Due to your need for all your various herbs and tinctures and things, that for some reason I at some point was selling something that you now swear by, for whatever reason. <laughs> um, and I, I think I feel like I want to bring my my bond into it and just say that like you're headed off on this adventure and it happens to line up with whoever I I wronged is now on their way into town and I need to leave quickly. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, I really think that's a cool idea that, that you're, we're kind of like the, Hey, here's, here's three people I can, you know, just hook into. Right? I'm with you now. I'm headed, you're headed out of town. I'm with you. And it looks a lot safer to be with you than over there with that person that I owe money to. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that you actually have a con going on with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, <laughs> right. You know, great, great uncle, uh, uh, Ta poor Tazgrax is convinced that. Yeah. Oh, and I also love that it essentially like forces to some degree my flaw onto you, in that you now you have to to keep it up, like keep up the charade, use your contacts and everything once you get into town to get me more of whatever it is that you've convinced me I need. Well, and I like that it goes with one of my one of my things too, which was that I never run the same con twice, and so now here I am forced to keep doing that, which I'm sure I find incredibly obnoxious, <laughs> <laughs> like to sustain this for such a long time. Like I'm sure it's just grating on my nerves. Yeah, I can see you're definitely not a long con <laughs> person. You know, you want you you're in for the short con, and here you've got you're signed up for the longest of long cons. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. <laughs> you, I love it. You keep trying to get out of your con and and something keeps on sucking you back in to our party. Uh, it finally gets to a point where I'm like, no, I lied about the whole thing. This elbow rub does not help your joints. It's not going to do anything. And you're like, no, it does. It does. <laughs> it does. I'd like, I'd even love it if it like eventually convinces you that it does work. Like you're pretty confident <laughs> yes. that it's effective. Yeah, no it was matter just something how that you like totally whatever, some weed on the side of the road and lo and behold. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just like mashed up dandelions. <laughs> yeah. But hey. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man, that's good. I like it. Yeah, we have a we have a character party now. Let's go. You guys, we made a team. Let's go on an adventure. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> character creation cast. We create characters, but we do not play them. No. Nope. <laughs> no. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much for joining us for part one of our Dungeons and Dragons character creation episode. Um, and we would like to Remind everybody where they can find you again. Um, Neil, where can people find you? Oh, anymore. That's excessive. But you can go to Twitter and go to at DMS underscore block at DMS block where that's the main podcast that I'm on. And of course, you can go over and go to at tentacles pod where you can hear the new call of cthulhu 7th edition podcast that i'm editing for encounter roleplay and because i love it so much i really don't care if you go there but if you do see fit you can head over to my blog where i'm putting out that fifth edition stuff and the url is the struggle is neil.com because i it's that's, hilarious that's a really good pun <laughs> i like it <laughs> um, and tell Squall, where can people find you? Uh, the best thing to do is to find me at all my different places is to go to my Twitter at Tall Squall. And then you, uh, my pin tweet has links to everything from my uh, D&D campaign that I am uh, the dungeon master for to some other projects that I'm a player in and would love to uh, see you guys. Let me know that you found me through this uh, podcast. All right. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you to everyone for listening to us. And you can join us again uh, for our next episode where we are going to discuss this process. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode uh, and that you'll stick around for part three, where we actually discuss how the character creation process went with our guests. We also have a huge catalog of episodes for you to enjoy. Um, so we hope you can find even more great games to bring to your table. We have covered old games, new games, indie games, well-known favorites, y you name it. Um, <laughs> by this point, we have, we've done it. That's not true. There are so many games that we'll never finish this list, Ryan. We'll never be done. We'll never, <laughs> we'll be, never done. be done. To keep adding more um, for some reason. Yeah. But we've, we've covered lots of games. Um, each series is self-contained, so you can jump in anywhere, find something that looks interesting to you. And please give give something a chance. Absolutely. If you want to find out more about us, you can find us online on Twitter and Instagram at CreationCast. You can find us on Facebook at Character Creation Cast. Uh, find us online at CharacterCreationCast.com. Uh, feel free to send us an email if you want at CharacterCreationCast at gmail.com. Or check out our Patreon uh, for some sweet, sweet bonus content at Patreon.com slash CharacterCreationCast. A lot of really good stuff on there, uh, including exclusive episodes that you can only get on our Patreon. So uh, absolutely check that out if you want. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope you will be here for part three, our discussion episode. Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune or online at LordNeptune.com. 
Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time.